Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Can everybody hear me? Sorry, I got a little bit late there. I actually started to upload this and realized my camera wasn't plugged in. So then I plugged in my camera and it said, oh, that doesn't work. So I had to stop and restart. So here we are at the beginning of our first ever Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage build party. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the show, Dojo. How are you? You can hear me okay? Uh, I've got the microphone down here. I'm not holding it and trying to eat it like I usually do, because <laughs> this time I need hands in order to work everything. So let's see. What can I say? <laughs> so here we are, my Monster Hobbies mechanics already. I've got my model here. Today I will be working on the Coca-Cola AMT van. So what sort of models did all of you bring? I see there's more people coming on, so that's always good. Gonna be a lot of fun. So my name, of course, is Trevor Slescu. I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada, in case you're actually coming on for the first time here. So let's see who's on. We've got uh, Dojo sitting in the chat saying hello. Hopefully some of, <laughs> pardon me, hopefully some of the other people will say hello. Hey, Dakota, how's it going? You're working on the Angula. Might start something else, though. Yeah, it's always interesting to uh, start a kit and then change your mind. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Anyway, yeah, so I'm working on this Coca-Cola van. I have heard that this is a kit with some problems in it, but that has yet to be seen. Okay, so today I have brought my hobby tools. So we have, of course, our X-Acto knife with the number 11 blade hooked into it. I also have, there it is, my number 16 hobby blade. This is good for getting in those areas and uh, scraping down below, much like um, mold marks stuck in floor pans and whatnot. Then I've got this block of MDF. That's, of course, that uh, wood that's got the um, sawdust and glue. And then on here, that's a sandpaper. That's 180 grit. Bob Boo, okay, how do you say this? Bob Boo Ub Ug, your creamy boy. Oh, okay, I see what's going on here. So let's just take this guy and uh, put the user in a timeout. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's a lot better. Yeah, this is a model building thing, not uh, whatever you're turning it into. Anyway, this is a finer, um, timed out for 300 seconds. This is a fine sandpaper, and I've got it. I don't know if you remember wearing these shoes back in the day. They used to be called thongs, not to be confused with the bathing suit. <laughs> anyway, I took one of these and I cut it up, and then I used the uh, fine sandpaper on there. Okay, and then we have a hobby saw. Might be needing that later on. Not too sure. I've got these nice side cutters as well by Zona. These have turned out to be very well. Then, of course, I've got Tester's Liquid Cement. Now, you know those squeeze bottle ones? I cut the top off and squeezed it into an old bottle of this. I don't know if you can get those bottles when you buy the glue anymore. I'll have to look at my wholesalers one of these days. Of course, we have our old standby, the Tester's Tube Glue. Always got to be careful you don't spill out all over the place. Then I have this nice hobby drill. It actually unscrews at the back. And then you've got your different uh, ends in here to hold the drill bit. They're all double-sided, of course. So it can go down to some fine drills. And then, of course, it's, a, I think, a 1 16th drill. Then we've got our other end here. Just got to remember which way to put that in. Yeah, always good to have tools on hand. Then we've, I've also got this little Zona drill. 
I used to sell them, but I sold out. <laughs> but this one, it's got a corkscrew right in here. So, and a spring. So when you press it or squeeze it down, it actually will do the drill action. So that's always fun. And then we've got a hole enlarging tool. I tried to explain this to somebody and they said, oh, I got a drill. It's not the same thing. This is one my dad built, actually. He took and heated up the metal and hammered it and filed it. And it's perfectly square. This, of course, is tapered, so you can put it in a hole and then twist it in just to get a different size. And then I've got my hobby files. This nice narrow one. I've been using these for at least 35 years. I've got the flat one with the wooden handle as well. And then we've got the half round, again with the taper, so you can get it into tight spots. So now, of course, I've got the uh, Ford model here, and I've, I'm doing an unboxing. This one is coming up next week on, of course, the Model Car Garage. And I, I got this kit last Christmas, so Christmas 2020, and I did a uh, video right away of course, because I wanted to build it right after. And I never got the chance until now. So that video, when you watch it, will still show me in the old store location. It'll be a longer video, like I think 45 minutes or something, because that's how I was doing the videos about a year or so ago. And it's not got that nice fast pace, you know. Hi, my name is Trevor. Here's a thing. And then da -da 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 -da, and as it goes down, it's still got the old style lingering type video that goes on. So when you see that, know that that is the official last video of me in my old store and, you know, the long drawn out thing and all that. That is the official last one because now I'm Monster Hobbies Online. And of course, I've got all that going faster. Okay, so now I want to show something just before we get into building. This, of course, would be good on the side of any van. These are Monster Hobbies stickers, as you can tell. And uh, ooh, okay, so there's our van body. Let's see. So this is designed just to go on the side about right there. So I sell these on our website, of course, www.monster-hobbies.ca, just like it says on the sticker bottom. <laughs> so if any of you want one of these, you're building a van, you want to build a Monster Hobbies van, I actually have a group build video going on as well on this channel, I do believe. I think that's where I put the video, but at any rate, it's on our Facebook page. So you can check that out there if you want to get one of these and build something. There's no real start-finish date on that build because, of course, it's open all year, every all the time. I also have two different sizes of that sticker. So you could have this uh, smaller on the van. This one was designed for Hot Wheels. And in fact, I've got a neat little Hot Wheel van to show. There's one of them. Sort of uh, done in Halloween style colors. Green on the top, orange on the sides. Pretty neat. Hey, here, Big Charlie's joined the group. Hey, Big Charlie, how you doing? Whoops. <laughs> Almost dropped something. So there's the other, how it looks on a, on a van. for The little sticker. So again, some pretty cool stuff. So hopefully everybody bought, <laughs> brought something to build because we're going to get into this pretty soon. All of my little Monster Hobbies model car garage mechanics, all of us, that includes you guys out there, we're going to begin here. Just a minute. Let's see, how can I pretty up my desk here so it's functioning? Move that to there. Put that there. Should be good to go. Okay, so I'm going to begin. Should I have a starter's pistol? Like, <laughs> no, anyway. Okay, so I'm going to start with this underpan here. And of course, the first thing we've got, let's see if the camera can pick this up, are of course these mold marks here. So they're quite raised. I don't know if I can circle these. Yay. <laughs> Does the camera pick that up? Kind of. Okay. At any rate, hopefully everyone can hear me here. 
So now I'm going to have a very dusty keyboard. Let's put this over the top. Yeah, the only thing I wish I could do on this build party is actually play some music. But of course, that would all get uh, caught up with the uh, YouTube copyright people and all the rest. So that's kind of out of the question. Oh, uh, another thing I'll do is just switch our hobby blade out for that number 16. So a lot of people have asked me in YouTube videos and whatnot, like, why do I keep suggesting this knife? So here's the reason. It's just too bad I don't have a, a Sharpie for this so I could circle it. But there is a mold mark right here. There we go. Just before that little sunken in box. And uh, it might not be too hard to get it with the sandpaper, I guess. But there's the risk of hitting this raised up rail. So what I'll do is just... Let's see here. Try to work into a camera. Just take the number 16 blade and scrape it along here. And scrape it out this way. And you can see like the blade is coming in flat on there. Whereas it's a little harder to reach with your number 16 blade. That's about got it off. So that's why I use that blade there, of course. And then we get into, let's just take off this other stuff with our sandpaper. So there's a method I learned when I was doing auto body collision repair, and that is to cross sand. Instead of just going across like this, you want to go at a bit of an angle. <laughs> okay, so I've gone at sort of that angle. And then cross back over on the reverse angle. So now we're getting that nice 45 degree cross cut. Or maybe 33 and a third degree. I don't know. But at any rate, once you get that all cross cut, you've got a nice flat surface. And that's how we learn to do uh, sanding in real auto body collision repair. So that your sheet metal panels are always nice and flat and smooth. I'm just hitting this with the finer sandpaper now to remove those 180 sandpaper marks we got in here. Usually you should really use 320 on that to start with. Because again, that leaves uh, less scratch marks in there. This is underneath, so it may not matter. So what are you working on on your model right now? Let us know in this little chat box off to the side here. Hopefully I pointed the right direction. <laughs> yeah, so that is a lot better than what we started with. So we'll just, again, cross sand the other spots on here. Okay, so while I'm doing this, on Sunday, tomorrow, I've got a whole bunch of new model cars for sale over at monster-hobbies.ca. So at the same time that I started this video, which is roughly one o'clock my time, we will begin showing tomorrow the new models that we've got. So if you are interested, please tune in there. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> Seemed to work really well last Sunday, so that was good. Uh, if you guys need replacement tools, you know, like let's say you're starting this, we're, we're working together and your number 16 hobby blade snaps in half for whatever crazy reason, <laughs> don't use that much pressure. pressure. <laughs> But anyway, I'm leaving uh, in the comment sec or the description of this video down below. There are links where you can go directly on my model ch or the Monster Hobbies web channel, a uh, channel, <laughs> the actual store. It's a link to the blades and everything, the tools that are for sale there. We can always send you out some new ones if you break them. Probably not in the exact same video because that would be a beam me up Scotty deal. <laughs> But at least, you know, sometime into the future. Okay, so 
Oh, and uh, don't forget to sign up on our newsletter as well when you're on the website. Because, you know, I'm trying to get that a little bit better, but every month or so I will be showing the new models with links and everything where you can buy them. Maybe even just catch up with you and say, hello, how's it going? Have you built what you bought a couple of months ago? You know, that kind of thing. Just to build community. So now I'm taking out the uh, mold marks inside under the transmission the tr transmission hump. This is going to be the best undercarriage ever. So how's your builds going? Are you getting anywhere? I know this is quite different. Different from that YouTube video where I had the chairs and Danny the dog and I were talking and saying, oh yeah, bring the chair out and all this stuff. It's kind of the reality of it, I guess. Okay, I had obliterated that. Mold mark. I hope this sandpaper isn't scratching your ears out through the microphone. <laughs> Yeah. There we go. Getting nice and smooth. This is only taking me a few minutes, actually, looking at the timer over there. I always wondered how I would do a model building video. Well, this live stream seems to be kind of a nice way to do it, actually. From my point of view, hopefully everybody is tuning in and scrubbing down some plastic or scraping a seam line or removing some paint from a gluing surface or something like that. It's just looking good. Feels good too. <laughs> How am I doing, Big Charlie? I'm pretty good. Just a little tired today. <laughs> Okay, Bob. Sounds good. Yeah. Stepsister took the phone. <laughs> All right. So another way to get in there. Did not need to move that. To remove some of the stuff, of course, is with our hobby file. No, always with the files, you want to push forward. You never go back and forth with a file. Because the reason being is that all the metal teeth are pointing forward. So these files work on the push stroke, as it's known. Uh, but again, I think I'll just go back to the sandpaper block. <laughs> Okay, well, Bob, what are you working on? Are you doing some models too? Are you new to model building? How may I assist somebody in doing something here? Which would be kind of interesting because I can't see anybody. You're only seeing me. <laughs> but I can see you in the side comments. So if you have anything you want to ask about, I'm open to answering a few questions here. Or is everybody kind of in the zone and doing stuff? Just listening to my voice here. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this is coming up quite nice. You know, even though these seem like simple and repetitive things that I'm doing here, uh, yes, they are. <laughs> but the nice thing about it is if you take the time to do this on your model kit, 
even though maybe not everyone will see this or something like that, like my dad used to say, if you know it's there, it's all the better for you, right? Even if someone can't see it. But the, the thing about this is, though, these are the advanced steps, even though they're repetitive and quite simple, that uh, will make your model come up a lot better. And if you're into the model car show circuits and things like that, like I used to be back in my 20s and 30s, well, even still, I don't mind entering a model contest, right? These are the things that will set your model up one step further than the model sitting on the table next to you. Hey, OG Garage, how you doing? Nice to see you again. We're in the middle of, well, I'm in the middle of cleaning up this undercarriage of the Ford Coca-Cola van. I would show the lid here just a minute. Hopefully not everything's going to spill out all over the place. There we go. I'm working on this. I got it last Christmas. I'm going to be unboxing it next week. <laughs> Although I unboxed it last Christmas. <laughs> so you're going to see my last ever Monster Hobbies in the actual store video of all time. And that will be that one. Okay, so I've got a... This is where the thing was molded to the part tree. This little dot on the top. So again, using that cross sanding technique... We'll just take that out with our sandpaper block. And of course, getting rid of all these little mold uh, where it was hooked up to the parts tree will make it fit a lot better inside the uh, van model. Is it morning where you are, OG Garage? It's uh, 1.30 right now in beautiful Alberta, <laughs> Alberta, Canada where we have hell for a basement. <laughs> have you ever heard that song? Okay, so now you can see this has got a nice proper profile on it. Yeah. I've lost my way, but I've heard tell that there's heaven in Alberta because they have all hell for a basement. And I've been in through the high river flood of 2013, and I know exactly how wet that basement can get. <laughs> Anyway, so I got a number 16 hobby blade again, and the reason why I'm switching it over is to get these mold marks that are down in those wheel arches. Nice to see eight people have now joined the party. Ah, you're down in California, so you should be at two hours ahead, so about 3.30, something like that. So just keep record of the time, because I'm going to try to do all my model car things now at this time frame. Okay, so I'm just, you're never going to be able to see this. <laughs> I'm scraping across inside this wheel arch at one angle. And now I'm going to reverse direction, scrape at the other angle. These are the hardest mold marks because they're just down in that crazy tight spot to get at. And of course, the reason why I'm getting rid of these is in case it hits the top of that tire, once we have our axle and uh, differential in here, last thing we need is to have this all painted nice and then the tire drags at the top. So there we go. 12.30 in California? You're an hour back? That's interesting. I always thought when you went south, you got an hour ahead. Ah. Sounds like there's a dog whining outside in the front yard. That's really odd. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. I'll take that one out of the other wheel arch. So who's working on what right now? Everybody's kind of quiet in that chat box off the side. What model did you bring to the party? <laughs> I'd hand out party snacks, but uh, that's virtual reality and possibility. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so what I wanted to say now that more people are joining up is tomorrow, uh, I have some more model cars that I purchased, 
and I've put them all on my website. So tomorrow, Sunday, at the same time here, I guess for OG Garage, I'd be noon. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one o'clock Alberta time, I will be showing the new model cars that we have for sale at www.monster-hobbies.ca. They're already listed on there. So if you guys don't want to wait till tomorrow when I'm actually like, you know, ah, this one or whatever, right? But not that one. <laughs> that you can check that out right now, www.monster-hobbies.ca. I've got links in this video description once it gets processed, which should be an hour or so. I don't know. So that you can click there and transport right away. I've got replacement tools if you need some, uh, hobby blades and whatnot. We ship all over the world, of course. Um, we've got, we can accept PayPal or credit cards, and that's all done through a secure um, shopping cart platform that we have established on the website. Of course, I need to be a legitimate business, right? So I'm going to have all the security systems set up there. So if you use your credit card after the purchase is made and processed, all that information disappears forever. I can't even access it. Nobody can. So I'm not there selling your info or, you know, that nonsense that's maybe some of the other websites do. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not. That's kind of shady. So I don't like to be shady. I like to be transparent. So, of course, that's the way it is. That's what we why we use that shopping cart system. Okay, so I've almost got rid of all the mold marks under here. There's just one right there. And then there's a bit of a rough edge on the sides here, so I'll get that with the sandpaper. Okay, so scraping again. Oh, and one other thing, when you're on the website, off in the side corner, wood machines for slot cars. Okay, OG Garage is working on a chassis of a 124 scale wood matches for a slot car. Making out of matchsticks? What uh, what car are you making for slot cars? Oh, yes. Getting back to the website part. We also have a special sale going on right now. It's a Black Friday savings. It goes from November 13th to the 23rd. So there's three days left on that one. You can save 15. That is 1-5% off of your next order. And any orders within Canada uh, get... 75 or over 75 dollars get free shipping within canada anywhere else we'll have to talk of course especially like if you want something shipped to england but i try to be pretty fair with shipping because i know that can be a tough one so my monster hobbies mechanics how is everything going are you having fun <laughs> Okay, let's cut that old mark out of there. Yeah, there's a Monster Hobbies newsletter as well you can sign up for on that website so you can get up to the date. Well, I don't know. Up, <laughs> I send out a flyer every now and again and uh, maybe some other things. I'm just sanding a little bit in here just in case this made a bit of a well when I scraped off that mold mark. Number five. When we were racing slot cars at Monster Hobbies before the store got shut down, I um, we had a slot car league, and we were trying to personalize our own cars. So our racing number was the year we were born. So my car was 74. Yeah, there's a dog whimpering out front. That's very weird. Of course, right in the middle of a live stream. You know, <laughs> do I need to call a vet? Building the rear axle at the moment. Dakota. Nice. On the Angula. Angula. Ang <laughs> okay, what is this thing here? Is that part of the frame? There's a little square there. I don't know. All righty. Well, we're half an hour into the video already. That's pretty nice. Glad that uh, six people are hanging in there.
<laughs> hopefully building something. It's always nice. Oh yeah, there is another interesting thing about this kit. Now, I don't know why they did this back in the 70s. But if you look in the wheel arch, can you see this? Very tough. There's this little row of dots all the way along here. And it's also around in the transmission tunnel. And I don't think they're really supposed to be there. I don't know what they are. Some kind of uh, AMT mold situation. They're also up along the bottom here. I don't know. Should I sand those out? Just leave them. I don't think they're going to interfere with anything. They just don't look nice. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should scrape them out of here. I think my kids are investigating the dog down there. Maybe I don't hear it now. Maybe it went away. Nope, I hear it. <laughs> It's still there. <laughs> Hi, Bob. How you doing? How's it going, eh? <laughs> Might as well say that, being in Canada. Whoa. So I slice my thumb there with that knife. And so I should switch off here if I'm not doing the mold marks and go back to number 11. I hope somebody didn't leave that dog in the car out there. I know it's not Danny out there. <laughs> Danny the dog from the videos. Yeah, our neighbor has dogs, but across the back alley there. And anytime, if you go outside and you even breathe, they'll start barking. <laughs> I don't know what that dog is out there. Lost puppy. Okay, just scraping down that seam line inside the wheel arch here. Nice dragging sound in your microphone. stiff neck doing this. Yeah, wish we could listen to some Zeppelin or something. Oh, nice. Big Charlie says his resin hearse body came today. What uh, what year of make of car for that hearse? I know there's a 62 Pontiac floating around there, but I don't know which one you got. Let us know, Big Charlie, in the comments down below <laughs> or in the chat box. Okay. So usually what I like to do when I scrape these seam lines is take a starting point and then scrape all the way around so that you know the pattern. 48 Chevy hearse. Oh, you got to show me a link of that one day, maybe in the next video or something. Or actually put it on the... Uh, the um, Johan Cadillac hearse that I did, the Heavenly Hearse. That would be a neat place to share that link. Yeah, so any of you guys get any new models or something like Big Charlie did? Something that came in the mail? Maybe something for me? <laughs> That'd be nice. I always like it when my customers get the things I send them and Canada the Post doesn't lose it somewhere. Uses a Galaxy 48 Chevy sedan delivery as a donor. You know what? I've got a lead on that 48 Chevy sedan model kit. I will be getting it sometime in the future. From my good hobby friend. <laughs> he, has, he has told me not to reveal too much. So <laughs> at any rate, yeah, it should be good. 
So look for that maybe coming up in the next month or so. On www.monster-hobbies.ca where we can take credit card and PayPal through our secure system and uh, all that fun stuff. Our secure shopping cart system. Don't forget to su subscribe to the newsletter and all that other stuff that I'm paid to say even though I own the company, so I guess I'm not really paid to say it. I just say it anyway. <laughs> yeah, Dakota, I hope that thing comes pretty soon. Dakota actually ordered two things from me, so we're waiting for the first one to get there, and the second one is rolling through with that uh, nice tracking number, because I give everybody a tracking number. That model kit is being mailed to the center of the universe. <laughs> Dakota knows what I'm talking about, or he'll soon learn. <laughs> what Canadians think of the center of the universe. <laughs> he falls around one province. <laughs> Her spotty is a Jimmy Flintstone from eBay. Uh, says Big Charlie. I got one from a guy in California selling his collection. Nice. Jimmy Flintstone. I have to take a look at that. I tried to get some stuff from Jimmy for the hobby shop, but it, I kind of ran out of money at the time. When you own a hobby shop, you must pay the rent of the building. <laughs> so that's, that's where some of that ended up disappearing to. But now that I'm Monster Hobbies online, the nice part is... I'm not renting a hub, uh, building. I still have my expenses to make, of course, like everybody else. But, uh, yeah, I got an email there, Big Charlie. I'll have to type that in to you in maybe as a response on one of the videos or something. I'll get that out to you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, tried to hook up with Jimmy Flintstone, but um, did not quite work out yet. Got interrupted with uh, life issues, <laughs> financial issues, and all that other fun stuff. So up in this wheel arch, just so you know, there's a bit of flash in there. So I'm trying to get that out of course. Ugh. Wow, this is uh, kind of a does not want to go. So I'm going to turn my hobby blade to actually cut instead of drag. Well, you got to be careful not to cut toward your hands like I always do. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a pro. I cut toward my hands and never get cut. Although, yet yeah, that can be a lie too. <laughs> I've actually got myself one time really good. I blacked out. It was weird. I accidentally stuck myself with the hobby blade at one point in time. It was a few years ago. I've been building for about 30-something years. Maybe 40. Okay, I started when I was 8, so it's almost... <laughs> I've been building for 40 years almost. Oh, man. Can you believe that? So anyway, one day I was using my hobby blade... And I accidentally stuck myself. So I did what any good hobby person would do. Grab the crazy glue, put it in. <laughs> Don't try that at home, kids. No, actually, in uh, the Vietnam War, they used crazy glue to seal wounds. So that's where I knew about that. About page. Okay, Big Charlie, I'll, I'll bounce that back to you and everything. So anyway, I, I fixed up my wound. I was fine. And then I guess it was just some kind of anxiety or something. And I blacked out. I woke up about half an hour later. It was bizarre. I never had that happen before. But it happened that day. <laughs> so be careful with your hobby knives. Because they could actually cut you worse <laughs> than what happened with me. But yeah. Yeah, that was a strange day. Don't want that one again. This is weird. That door panel kind of 
curves up at the front. I don't think that's supposed to be like that. This one's flat across there. So now I've got to be careful in the back here because there is a bit of a lip for that glass. So I'll just try to cross sand and knock that little thing that's going on up front. Okay, mechanics, that seems to have gotten it across. You're all my Monster Hobbies model car garage mechanics now. <laughs> so there we go. We're all working at our shops, working with our tools, getting these models built. I'm glad I'm here. This is like the first time I've been putting my knife to a model car kit in years. Because what happened is... Um, Owning the hobby shop, we played a lot of Warhammer. Now, Warhammer is, a, of course, a model kit building game. You build up all the army figures, right, which are like dwarves, elves, goblins, things like this. Eh? You paint them, and then they've got rule books, and you got a big table, and you play on the table with the scenery and everything. It's a fun game. But uh, Monster Hobbies needed to have a standing army in order to play with the other people, and customers and kids and everybody else, right? people my age. It's quite a well-rounded out game. So of course I had to build all these armies. So I've got dwarves, I've got goblins, I've got, you know, you name it, humans, elves. But uh, the model car building took a big rest when that was going on. So it's nice actually to, I know it's not quite like it was in the store, but you know, it's nice to have everybody here. Seven people, three thumbs up. <laughs> and People like Big Charlie and everybody talking in the comment section. And uh, actually build something again. Yeah, I gave away the tow truck slot car. That was uh, that was quite a long time ago, actually. And I still got all the slot car track. You can see up there where my finger's pointing behind the Predator. So when I get the brick and mortar store going again, probably in about two or three years, in a different town, <laughs> in a different time, I can actually uh, set it all up again and get going. But I still get a lot of people asking me, you know, when, when am I going to do my next slot car video? Well, I don't know if they're aware that I have no location. I mean, there's no place in this house here to uh, hook up a slot car track, especially on that table. Oh, the tow truck. Yeah, Big Charlie. It uh, was sort of a luck of a drop. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that Carrera tow truck is nice. Do you got a digital Carrera set there, Big Charlie? The digital is the nicest set. You can have the, the tower and know your times, all that kind of stuff cool stuff. Find out who's on the lap counter. You can even hook up for the uh, speedometer. Hey Rob, how you doing? Welcome to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Build Party, which is pretty much me talking to everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you can ever pick up a Carrera digital track, Charlie, that's it's actually, you have a lot of fun with that. You can even set a car as a pace car and race against yourself. So, always cool. And then, of course, the lane changes and all that. Uh, Jimmy Holmes is building a 57 Ford right now. Which one? A the AMT kit or the Ravel? And is it the wagon? Or the regular Ford? Or even the gasser? That one's neat. Or maybe... No, wait. I don't know. Is there a drag racing 57 Ford out there? not drawing any pictures in my brain. <laughs> so nice that everyone can join us here. I wasn't sure how this would turn out, but it seems to be okay. We only had one slight little thing happen, but that turned out to be somebody's sister that grabbed their phone. <laughs> so that's okay. Oh, the old Tyco 
A-Team racetrack, going back to the 80s. Hey, Charlie, did you ever get the one that has the HO train that goes around and then it's got the slot car track and you try not to hit the train with the slot car track? Ah, Rob has several of the 77 Ford van, the Vantum, the cruising van, the Coke one. I'm working on the Coke one now and the surf one. So that's the latest. You know, I bought these when I had the hobby shop. I bought a bunch of the Coke models because a friend of mine gave me a Coke refrigerator, a little one that fits a six pack in there. And then I got a toaster that's for hot dogs. Too bad I can't bring this stuff up. You guys get a kick out of this thing. It's a toaster, but instead of like the two slots that go up and down, it's got um, a half moon on each end. And then in the middle, it's got a an oval with a little tray thing that you pull up and down. You put two wieners in the tray thing. And then you take your hot dog bun and you open it up and you put it in the half moon on one end and the other end. And then you push it down just like a toaster. It doesn't do too well on the wieners, but it does toast the bread nice. And then it'll pop up and everything pops up and you got your hot dog wiener and everything in the toaster. Uh, Charlie has four HO train sets. When I was young, I started with the uh, model trains with my dad. And I still got the train set. A lot of old Tyco stuff. I've got the Tyco uh, Superman and Batman train cars. The box cars, the, the big ones. Seven-point roll bar with NASCAR rear, rear wheel tubs. Jimmy Holmes 57 Ford. That's pretty cool. Boy, there's a lot of flash on this floor pan. Stuff I'm just noticing as I'm going through. Ah, anyway, I bought all those Coca-Cola models for display for the store. And the toaster and the fridge and stuff, just to add a little bit of coolness. I was going to take one of my bookshelves and paint it red, and then put Coca-Cola on the sides, which I was going to cut out with a stencil blade uh, from one of the long 24-pack uh, can packs, you know. You take the box apart and cut out the Coca-Cola letters, and you got your stencil. So that's what I was going to do there. But again, one of those projects that never happened, which is good because <laughs> I would have had to take it apart when we had to uh, close down the brick and mortar part of our store. Pardon me. Whoa. Of our store. Ah, boy. Burping in the live stream. That's, <laughs> that's just not allowed. Too bad there's no uh, delete to go back on these things. I suppose I can edit it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's not a call attention. Too late. <sighs> so, if you guys are interested, tomorrow I've got more model car kits that I purchased from a friend of mine. They're sealed. They're old. Not like 1962 old, but, you know, in the 90s, early 2000s. These are new model cars. We have them over at www.monster-hobbies.ca. But tomorrow, because like last Sunday, I showed a whole bunch of model cars we have for sale, and it turned out to be pretty nice. So I'm going to try that again this Sunday. And these are new. A lot of you had bought a bunch of those models. So, of course, we need to replace them so that there's always something there on our model car you know, web link. So I will be doing that video at the same time I started this one, which was around 1 o'clock my time. So check it out tomorrow. Hopefully we'll see you there. But in the meantime, <laughs> let's keep building. Yeah, I went and bought a 2 liter of Coca-Cola because I was going to use that in this uh, video. And then I had to start the video and I forgot it stopped in the fridge. But I, I did tell my daughters not to drink it. Okay, Charlie, we will see you later. Have fun. If you want, you can always check this video back out again later. And I'll send you an email link or something. If you guys actually want to post pictures of your build, we could do that over on Facebook, too. I should make a group for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I should be doing. 
Rob says that he is working on several kits at the same time. 76 Chevy California Cruiser van and IROC Racing Porsche and Camaro. That's the way I used to do stuff. So I paint with uh, enamel spray paints. So it takes about a week for everything to dry properly. So if you do a whole bunch at once. Oh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well. There's my neck getting really super stiff. Uh, anyway, if you work on a whole bunch at once, um, your paints will dry at different times, of course, so you can keep this the momentum going. I'm going to remove those little dots that are down in this uh, door well here, just with my file. Fifty minutes of doing this, and I've got six people that are watching all the way through. Got to thank everyone for sticking around with them, their patience and hopefully building something too and having fun with it. not saying anything. <laughs> He's just sand, uh, filing down these dots. And dots and dots. Connect the dots. <laughs> okay. I guess everyone's busy working away. All the Monster Hobbies model car garage mechanics over here, sanding down their model kits and whatnot. It's too, bad I, too bad I can't do this like a conference, eh? I don't know. Can you do that on YouTube? Is that a thing? Does anybody know? We could do it like a Zoom meeting or we can have like six people pop up and I know I've been on one of those. I know it can be done, but I, I, it's probably software I don't have or something. Or maybe it's like the wrong button I pushed or whatever. <laughs> anyway, I guess I'm kind of alone, <laughs> visually speaking. I know there's like six of you still in here, but uh, anyway, I think I will be okay. Except for these dots down here, this is goofy. They're gonna show up when you undercoat this thing, or when I undercoat it. <laughs> Or whoever, well, I guess if uh, uh, Rob says I often watch model car videos on YouTube while I build. Okay, so I guess I'm not too bad. Welcome to the live version of this where anything could happen. Somebody could burst right through that door behind me and I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not. If it is, it's my kids. <laughs> Or maybe Danny the dog will come running in here. I'm hungry. Feed me. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, that won't fit there. Oh, boy. Yeah, definitely need some relaxing music to play back here that's not copyrighted. <laughs> Get me in trouble with YouTube. Something nice and relaxing like uh, Iron Maiden Run for the Hills. Yeah, that always makes me relax. <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, I'm building this van. This is the 40 Conoline Coca-Cola van because uh, right now I have three of these things to unbox. This one I got for Christmas last year. 
And I was so excited to get building on it. I wanted to do YouTube videos where I showed everybody how to build this thing and whatnot. And it didn't happen. But I did the unboxing last Christmas in the old hobby shop before, of course, we closed We closed the brick and mortar in September. So you get to see the last ever Monster Hobbies video in that store location at that brick and mortar coming up at the end of this month, next week, next Friday. So remember when you're watching that, that I actually filmed it in the very end of 2020, right after Christmas. I uh, went to the store. No one was there, and I filmed this unboxing video then. Real exciting times for me back then. <laughs> and now I'm Monster Hobbies Online 100%. And if you want to see what we have for sale, of course, you can visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. <laughs> and we ship worldwide. We have a secure payment system where we can accept PayPal and your credit card. And once you use the credit card, all the information disappears forever. Nobody can access it. Nobody sells your information because the only person there is me. <laughs> And who am I going to sell it to anyway? Like, that's crazy. I'm not into that stuff. I only sell model kits and model kit accessories. I'm like Hank Hill of the hobby world. I sell model kits and model kit accessories. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, we've got new model cars coming out. And tomorrow, at the same time as this video, I am going to pop back up here on the live streams. And show you guys what we got. We got some really cool things. We got dragsters. We've got some classic, uh, classic hot rods, and a bunch of other neat stuff. And of course, the stuff because we we started to sell model kits after that last live stream. Dakota is one of them. Thank you very much. Thanks for your help and support out there. And uh, yeah. It's always nice. So his order is, of course, coming across. You know, that live stream was so successful, even my sister ended up buying a model. And my sister never buys models and or builds them, but all of a sudden, she bought one. <laughs> I was amazed. I was awestruck and spellbound. But uh, my sister is a writer, and she's published a quite a few books now. And uh, she is currently working on a story set in the 1930s. It's like a spy book or something. Sort of a... She writes gothic horror. Horror. H-O-R-R-O-R. <laughs> -R -R -R. In case that sounded weird. Uh, anyway, that's what she writes. And this time around, she is doing a... Kind of like a, I, I think it's got a gothic edge to it, but it's a story about a, um, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, Rob. Rob says, is it hard to sell kits in a hobby store? I'd want to keep all of them. Well, there's actually two monster hobbies, okay? <laughs> Just so you know, there's the monster hobbies that I sell stuff on, and then there's monster hobbies, which equates to all this stuff that I unbox and build, which is really my own collection of models. <laughs> That's the second one. <laughs> I get paid, uh, monetized by YouTube, I guess. And that's how they pay for my models, which is like, I need a lot more views. <laughs> Let me put it that way. It'd probably take me about three months to buy one model with what they pay me on YouTube. But uh, it helps. <laughs> um but getting back to my sister there. So she's writing this book that's like this detective guy in the 30s. And he, he's got all these weird things that happens to him, right? Uh, without giving away the story, of course. Her and I kind of talked on that one. But uh, anyway, so she bought a model that I had, which is the 1930 Packard. And uh, that one is a nice kit. That's the old monogram one. The one that goes together super well from Harris Auto Museum. So I got, I have to mail that out. Actually, I can show you what she got. Now, it's no longer for sale. Actually, I can't. It's in the other room. <laughs> Whoa, there goes a sticky note. 
fell down behind here. That's the one that says, free shipping on orders over $75 within Canada. Just fell down in my lap. That's over at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Of course, you're on the Monster Hobbies channel, so I've got to plug <laughs> a little bit. We have a Black Friday savings going on now. Save 15.15% off on your next model kit purchase. And uh, sign up for our online newsletter. Our website is priced in Canadian dollars. I forgot to say that. So if you see something and the prices look absolutely crazy, it's Canadian money. <laughs> so you know it ain't that crazy now. <laughs> okay, I'm getting rid of the dots in here. Yeah, so my sister bought that uh, Packard model. Getting back to that again. And she's going to build it because she is going to write that now the detective has a Packard boat tail speedster. Originally, it was going to be a, a McLaughlin Buick. So how Canadian is that? But there's no models of that. So then she was going to buy the uh, 32 Chrysler, the uh, one that Dakota ended up getting. And uh, she bought the Packard. But Packards have a, a bit of a history with our family. My dad bought a 48 Packard. And my grandpa had a 30, 37, I believe. <laughs> and my uncle threw it out in the garbage. <laughs> oh, boy. My uncle had, well, when he was alive, he had a... Um, an Austin Healey. A 50s Austin Healey sports car. This this story will break somebody's heart out there. <laughs> he had an Austin Healey sports car. And um, he lived at home his whole life. But at any rate, he had an Austin Healey sports car. And my grandpa would not let him have it in the garage for whatever crazy thing was going on between the two of them. So... My grandpa had this 37 Packard sitting in the garage, and my dad had his 48 Packard sitting in the garage because my dad sold his Packard to my grandpa for a dollar. This is like back in the 50s. <laughs> you know, one of those crazy deals. So my grandpa had both Packards in the garage, and my uncle wanted to put his Healy in the garage. And, of course, my grandpa said, like, no, right? Well, my grandpa passed away the year after I was born. And because he was gone, my uncle, who had his Austin sitting in the alleyway, wanted to put his Austin Healy in the garage. So my uncle took the wrenches to the 37 Packard piece by piece, took it apart, and threw it every week into the garbage can behind their house. And the city took it away and threw it out piece by piece. I think it took him about two years to get rid of that Packard. That's how he did it. Why he didn't sell it or anything is absolutely crazy. But he uh, yeah, dismantled it and threw it in the garbage can. A 37 Packard piece by piece. Kept the motor, kept some other bits, but sheet metal, seats, everything gone. Unbelievable. <laughs> but anyway, what happened to the Healy? Well, when my uncle passed away, the government took it, and nobody knows whatever happened to it. But I'm pretty sure the government threw it out piece by piece. <laughs> so that's a sad story of both the Austin and the Packard. At any rate... Anybody know anyone that threw a car away piece by piece like my uncle did? Let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> but actually, the interesting thing with my uncle, he took a, a test, a special test back in the day, and it turned out back in the 50s, the test results for my uncle ended up that he was one of 
the five smartest people in all of Canada in the 50s. And they gave him a special award. And they gave him a book. And the book, I hope I can inherit this because my dad ended up getting it. It's called the Dykes Encyclopedia. And it is that thick. And it was written in the 1920s. And it is every mechanical uh, car, um, steam engines, you know, you name it, right? Everything up to that day that was modern. And it has blueprints and everything for everything ever made. And uh, my uncle got that as a prize for being one of the fifth for that test, for being one of the fifth smartest people in all of Canada in the 50s. So, but <laughs> somehow it wasn't too smart to like take apart a Packard piece by piece and throw it in the dumpster. Or maybe it is. I mean, that, that might be an accomplishment in itself. Like, man, there's got to be how many pieces in a car, especially a Packard, which was America's Rolls Royce, as you know, or may know. And uh, you can imagine how heavy the sheet metal and everything would have been on that, because that's when they use 16 gauge steel. I got a 51 Studebaker outside, and it's. <laughs> I'm a, a body man originally, auto auto body collision repair, and I've got my hammers and dollies and all that stuff. And I tried to hammer out the dents on that car. Nope. <laughs> you take that hammer, you can give it a full swing as hard as you can with the block underneath to get the dent, nothing happens. It's beyond my physical strength to actually hammer a dent out of 16 gauge steel without using a torch <laughs> to soften that metal enough to make it move. That's crazy. I can do 18 gauge steel. I can do uh, 22. Like my cutlass I think is between 18 to 22 back there, 72 cutlass sheet metal. I. I do think that's right. Anyway, I can I can take dents out of the cutlass, but I can't out of that Studebaker. That thing is insane. It could also be that where the dent was was on the top of the fender, and that's crowned over. So maybe it's one of those deals, you know. Like, although that that should make it easier, because uh, I remember the auto body collision repair. My teacher, when I took the course back in the nineties was saying if you got a Volkswagen Beetle with a dent in the fender, because it's got that complex curve, so it goes this way over the wheel, then it goes this way on the fender itself, on the side profile. It's, it's like a triple curve. You can hit the dent, and because it's that triple curve, it will pop the dents out in like three dimensions this way, this way, and whatever the other way was. <laughs> Forget the third one. But yeah, no, that's Studebaker. I can't move that dent. <laughs> Gonna have to go get more serious, I guess. Okay. Yep, so now we're getting rid of the seam line thing up the top. How's everyone's builds going? You getting anything done out there? We're for the one hour and eight minutes we're at now. <laughs> Enjoying my crazy stories. All my model car mechanics out there. I liked. Uh, I took um, mechanics in high school, starting in grade eight and going to grade twelve. And uh, the last two years, grade 11 and 12, were in another school and a bigger auto mechanic shop. And uh, our teacher there, our mechanics teacher, he would always have these war stories, he called them, but they were like mechanic stories. <laughs> and it was funny whenever he talked, it, it would be like somebody, the moment he started talking, there'd be like this big weight that came from 
invisible weight no one could see that was coming from the clouds. And it would come down on him as he was talking because he'd always say, okay, class. Oh, and he had to push against the weight. So he'd always say something like, okay, class. Now today we are going to be doing something using our tools. He'd always do that. It didn't matter what it was. So he'd tell like a horse, one of his war garage stories. And they always have a trick. You know, like we, we had these tables and on the edge of the tables, they had like a side. So if you spilled oil in it or something, it would go and hit the side, not go on the floor. So we'd have a, a shop rag or something like that to clean up messes with. So he'd get t-shirts and stuff and old ones. And he'd say, okay, I'm going to show you this war trick on how to cut the rag. So he'd take the rag and he'd go on the table where the edge was straight up and down. And he'd hang the rag over and then he'd take one of the hammers and he'd go tap, 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 tap on the top of the ridge where the rag was hanging over. And then that would eventually cut the rag off. And he'd say, there's your war trick, right? But always, you know, like, okay, guys, I'm going to teach you now how to change spark plugs in a motor. Okay, so you want to take the plugs. <laughs> like, what's this weight? What's crushing him? Is God like going... Mm. Oh, he's talking again. Hang on. Because mm. <laughs> he'd always do that. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyway, anybody have uh, like some teacher stories when they took mechanics or something like funny like that? Rob says, I am just fiddling with an AMT 29 Ford. Is that the, uh, the little coupe that was broken by my ex-wife and sitting for years just trying to put it back together? That's a good kit. Um, either the coupe or the uh, the Woody with the station wagon, or the station wagon, the pickup truck. That one is coming out again from AMT. And if you want to see me unbox that kit, I have it on my web channel or on the model Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, somewhere in the the back videos, the unboxing ones. So speaking of model cars, tomorrow, of course, I'm going to be showing at um, Sunday. One o'clock, same time as I started this video. We've got brand new model kits. The soft top. Okay, Rob. Um, lost my thought. We got brand new model kits at Monster Hot, and I'm going to be showing those tomorrow. But you can check them out now. I've uploaded all the listings at www.monster-hobbies.ca. <laughs> Maybe I'll sell some before I show them tomorrow. <laughs> Who knows? Some of you guys are pretty fast on that one which I thank you for, of course, it keeps me going. But uh, so there's brand new kits. There's dragsters. There's, there's a model a on there uh, later years, 31, I think. Um, yeah. So a bunch of cool stuff going to be coming out there. And then if you guys are building your model here and you break a tool as we're in this show, I actually have all the tools now listed up there on the website as well. So you can get some new number 11 hobby blades, for example, maybe. I don't know. And then we've got a newsletter, of course. Uh, so if you sign in for the newsletter every month or so, I will send out a big newsletter blast saying, hey, we got all this cool stuff, more than just model cars. You know, oh, I've got car books as well, if you guys are into that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, on our website, it's all Canadian dollars. And uh, we've got a secure credit card service that we use so that any of your information, if you use your credit card, disappears. We also accept PayPal. I would do normal Interact, but you got to come to my house for that. <laughs> I don't think you're doing that. The uh, insurance won't allow it. And uh, what else? Hmm. Black Friday savings. If you type in Black Friday saving or savings, you will get 15. That's one five percent off of your purchases and any purchase over $75 in Canada gets free shipping. Yay. Everybody likes free shipping except me and my accountant. <laughs> anyway, especially the accountant's got to figure all that out at the end of the year in April. He'll have fun with that. Hey, look at all these bills I got for shipping. Okay. Guess what? It looks like I actually got this piece finished. Are we ready to stop or should we keep going? You know what the answer is. <laughs> keep going <laughs> anyway let's just see how this fits in here I, I don't know if it's going to be much help okay well you can see that 
This is a lot tighter now because there was that uh, mold release point or sprue, sprue tree clip off, I guess. You know, in the factory they did this on the sprue. So that's out of the way. I think I got all those little dots out of the wheel arches in here, out of the transmission hump in here, off of there. Everything feels nice and smooth. I don't see any mold marks. Do you? No, maybe you can't because maybe you can. How's that? Do I pass, Dad? 1964 BC. Hi, Trevor. Keep up the great work. Loving the live videos. Thank you. I hope you are building something there, 1964 BC. Um, be nice to know what you're working on. Let me know in, what do you call that? The chat box. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we we'll keep on going. Like I said before, we're, we're going to be doing another video tomorrow, and I'm going to show you guys all the new models I've got. I have 10 new ones, and then, of course, there's still the stuff that hasn't sold yet, like the Hudsons. Well, well one of the Hudsons did. Dakota got one. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean, Vern? Anyway, uh, yeah, those will be out there. Do I do the body next? What's this piece of paper here? Oh, yes, I also have Monster Hobby stickers that you can get as well. So this is the last of my big one. But see, you can stick this on the van. It's sort of the right size. <laughs> this is a vinyl sticker, in case you're wondering. And I've got smaller ones that you can put on Hot Wheel cars. Now, did any of you guys see my uh, King of the Mountain there's a guy in California that has a Hot Wheel track, and he is called 3D Bot Maker, and he's got a tournament called the King of the Mountain. And I sent one of these vans. It's a black one with a neat stripe on it. Almost looks like the A-Team van. I painted these, took them apart. You put weights in them because they, they, I think he, the heaviest is like 115 grams, if I remember right. And then they go down this great big Hot Wheel track. It's all filmed like live race car footage. Here's another one of the fans I made. And, um, yeah, it's got all this live footage and stuff. So he, anyone around the world can enter this thing. It's uh, whichever car is the fastest on it become the king of the mountain. So, of course, I entered one of these vans that I made up. And I actually, <laughs> in the video... I've got a the I've got a, a video of the highlights of that race, but it links to the original video. And in that first race, I actually was like this far away from everybody else, all the way to the end. And then I fell over. <laughs> hey, there's 66 B Mustang, otherwise known as Rob Lynn, saying hi, hi Rob, how you doing? So anyway, that that King of the Mountain video is really cool. So that's why I made up those stickers for that and i have them there so there's their right and left hand side you can get these on the website as well check out the like really investigate that my monster hobbies website because there is a lot of things on there you know if you got the time just do a big crawl all the way through it i've got scientific kits i've got tools i've got these stickers i've got um wow star trek stuff I've got comic books, I've got manga, graphic novels. I think I still got to put those on. I got military figures. I've got everything. Hey, 10 people have joined us. Hey, nice to see you all. I just finished scraping down this. If you've brought your model kit, uh, come work with us. If not, go grab one and come work with us. Yeah, thanks, Rob. It'll be cool. www.monster-hobbies.ca. Here. See you on the blue. Hang on. <laughs> ah, lock that in for a second here. Boy, I'm shaky. Even trying to stop myself from shaking is making me shake. <laughs> okay. Maybe that's a scream line. Uh, the scream lines. Ah, I'm scraping down scream lines. Look. Ah, ah. <laughs> there we go. Okay, yeah. So my Monster Hobbies mechanics, how far are you along here? We've got in an hour and 20 minutes already. 
this is quite the live stream, and all I'm doing is just working on this van. <laughs> do I do the body, or do I try to do the frame rail? Let's do the frame rail, and let's see how that interior pops onto it, because the body is sort of its own beast. Okay. So there's the frame rail. That's the front, of course. You got your A member. I'm in the other CA known as California. Okay, that's good to know. We can ship to California. If, uh, Rob, if you actually watched the King of the Mountain on 3D Bot Maker's Hot Wheel Racing Channel, you would have seen my van. <laughs> well, I've got a video in my my uh, monster hobbies model car garage down here and it shows the highlights of that and then it's got the link to the actual event so you can see but i almost i almost got through that qualifying round and the van was top heavy because the way i had the weights inside i didn't i i wanted to send down one with the metal underbody but the plastic one actually i sent down two one with the metal underbody and one with the plastic underbody and, of course, the metal underbody, the wheels somehow locked on it. I don't know what happened. Something in shipping, I guess. And the plastic body was fine. But the plastic body, I had the weights in, like, right to the roof. So when the van went around a corner, it went bleh, twice. But the other two times, they did a bonus race. And it actually went, it, it went so fast, I was that far away from every other... Uh, car in that thing but unfortunately that that was not enough okay so i'm taking my clippers and i will just clip this carefully off here ah, getting a little bit of there we go now there's this part on here so don't throw that away if you're doing this van along with me I thought I would do these vans because, uh, well, for one thing, I got this one for Christmas last year, and I really wanted to build it, and I made an unboxing video, and that's going to be coming up next week, or the, well, today's Saturday, yeah, so next next Friday, and uh, I filmed the video last year, the day after Christmas when I got the van, and that's why in if you. Uh, if you're new to my channel and you watch that homepage channel video, oh, cool. Uh, 1964 BC is working on the 55 Chevy Cameo Coke one. Oh, you got it for me. Oh, thank you. Yeah, pre COVID. <laughs> Good Lord. You know, can you believe we've been doing this COVID, playing the COVID game here since uh, man, 2019 in March or something? No, 2020 in March. Can it end, please? Anyway, we won't dwell on that because I know everybody's tired of it, including me. But uh, I just keep doing what they tell me to and hope it goes away. <laughs> or, Well, that's a good part about being Monster Hobbies online now. I don't actually have to have people come to the store. <laughs> well, online, yes, but not the house or, you know. Anyway, enough of that. Um, I got this at Christmas in 2020. Or 20, 2019 going into 2020, maybe. It's been a while. And I was so excited that I made the unboxing video in the old store, right? And now I don't have the old store. And that footage, I, I filmed the thing and I uploaded it and I set the date for December 3rd. And then I found out it was actually the 29th of March. March. Uh, <laughs> November. Wow. So anyway, um, I made that video and I uploaded it to the web. And I, I it's been sitting on the Monster Hobbies thing for a year. And uh, I don't know if people see it and they're in anticipation waiting for that thing, but it's going to finally drop next week. So you will see me and last time in the original Monster Hobbies store. Not the original, but, you know, the one I've had for so long. And uh, that'll be it. After that, all future videos will be in my basement. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, the Coke machine in this one is cool. That's the full cabinet style. This came out in the 70s. And in this unboxing video, I've got a picture of an original one in a hotel that some 
I guess, kid is getting a Coke from. It's pretty cool. I also love these. They give you the yellow as well as the red, so you can build these crates as sort of an earlier version or later. But anyway, there it is. Oh, and another nice thing. This is kind of off topic, just for a sec. This is the official Town of High River business license. Guess who got it? Me! And it's not the one I bought last Christmas, or last December, I guess, Christmas. Christmas coming up. Don't forget to shop online. <laughs> Anyway, um, I got that. Okay, because now I'm running the business out of my house. Um, because I'm doing the business out of my house, I had to re-register with the town saying that I can actually have uh, business from the house. It's called a... a uh, occupancy or something like that. But anyway, it's all legit now. I have my business. It only took a day for the town to do this. I was uh, kind of freaking out because it said on there they might have to send someone over to the house. And right now I've got this much room where I can walk through without hitting something because we had a 1,500 square foot store that we had to collapse into the house. The house is 1,200 square feet and still has stuff from the High River Flood all over the place plus stuff from my wife and my kids and me and everything else. So everything just got crammed in there. So we finally got it sorted out. And now I can finally actually sell out of this as a legitimate noted by the town business. So that's cool. So I see uh, Rob and Jimmy Holmes here have actually said a few things. So Rob said that he searched for real photos of that machine. So I think what he's referring to is the 55 Chevy Cameo pickup truck from 1964 BC here. And Rob says he only found the identical machine in Pepsi markings, which would be cool. It would be, it would be neat if uh, AMT got the Pepsi thing as well. I think they do, but they're not really using it. Coke and Monopoly, it seems, right now. And then Jimmy Holmes is asking, did AMT make a Coke Crown Vic, maybe 53? Yes, Jimmy, they did. And I just sold it to somebody. <laughs> I had it for quite a while. And I sold it to somebody. So I'll see if I can get another. That's another thing I'm going to try to do. If I can sell these model cars and whatnot on the website, and I can meet my expenses and exceed my expenses, the vending machine. Oh, okay, in Pepsi. Oh, okay, cool. Well, in that video coming up, I have the Coke one. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yes. If I can sell these model cars and whatnot, I can keep it rolling with my wholesaler. I'm going to try to reconnect with uh, Stevens International. I, I'm still connected. I just haven't talked to him in a bit. And uh, I can bring in some new models. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I should be up in the game when the new stuff pops out. I should have something here for all you guys, for my Monster Hobbies mechanics. And the other thing I'm going to look into is I've got one monetized channel. That's a Madcap Romanian channel, which is not really where I want people to be going anymore. But they still keep going. <laughs> and it pays me, so I'm not going to shut it off by any stretch of the imagination. But once Model Car Garage gets monetized, there is a thing that I can do. And it is for members. So if you want to support me and become a member, it's sort of like a Patreon deal where, you know, for like a dollar a month or something like that, you can support this channel. But what I'm thinking of doing is in the members section, if you uh, join up when that happens, there will be a special percentage, a secret code or something that you can use like a coupon code over on my website. And that will save you a percentage off of your purchases with us forever. <laughs> like in, uh, you know, um, what you want to call it, that movie. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It's coming to me in Edmonton. Should be here next week. Oh, okay. I know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for ordering all that. You're my number one customer. Actually, you got stuff off me eight times in a row. It, I can tell that on the website. That's the other nice thing I like about the website is the inventory control. 
because when I was in the store, um, I had a web, well, it's the same website, but I had stuff on my website. I couldn't get it all, all the other stuff into my website because of course I'm dealing with customers and everything else and the slot car club and the Warhammer and all that stuff. So I never could get enough time to constantly working on the website and updating it and making sure all the stuff that's on the shelves in the store were on the website. And then the other problem with that is whatever was on the website, of course, because it's on the shelf and I only have like one of something. So if I sold that in a big order at Christmas or, you know, people came in and pulled it off the shelf at Christmas, I should say, it would take me a few months to get back on the website in order to clear off whatever happened, especially at Christmas. Like, so, but now with the web, with this only being the website, as soon as you place an order and I click processed, it takes whatever was on the website and it says, this is now out of stock. And what I do after that is I, I hide the, the listing. Yeah. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. So I hide the listing and um, so then no one can see it and think that it's still there and that they can buy it when it's been gone for like a couple of years. <laughs> and then if I get the product again, I can always bring that listing back up like I did with one of the model kits that's in um, the new stuff that's coming up here uh, tomorrow. will be, um, what do you call it? Tomorrow... At the same time as this started, so one o'clock, I will be showing some new model kits that I've bought, model cars, of course, for the store. If you don't want to wait that long or can't make it, they're all on the website right now, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Actually, 1964 BC there, you should, uh, or maybe you could, I don't know where, I'll have to figure that out, but on the website, Maybe you could uh, leave a comment that, you know, something like uh, uh, whenever you order from me, you always get your stuff. <laughs> something like that. A testimonial, they call it. That would be nice. Um, provided you're happy with the service, of course. If you're not, I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, you know, something like that would, uh, would be nice. But... Um, Yeah, actually, speaking of which, I think you're the only guy that got one of these. And I'm wondering, yeah, I, uh, 66 Mustang, I'm going to be working on getting stuff from round two because I'm hooked up with Stevens International. So they have round two, Ravel, Monogram, Polar Lights, uh, stuff from Russia, ICM, the Japanese stuff, Tamiya, Tamaya, Potato, Patata. 1964 BC has some of these stickers. He bought them about a year ago. I was looking at some of the old sales from you because that's the sale part is still on there, but the any of the credit card information long since gone. Every time you make a sale, I have to re-ask for the credit card info because it disappears, which is, of course, all that safety stuff, right? Nobody wants to get hacked. But at any rate, um, he got these about a year ago, and I'm wondering, have you ever used them? <laughs> Because you were gung ho to do that uh, model kit group build thing, which is still going, never stopped. Just nobody's doing it. <laughs> yeah, no problem, Rob Lynn. Um, there will be a lot of cool stuff coming in there. I'm trying to rebuild from closing down a brick and mortar store. But now that I have no rent overhead, which is nice, I can actually put in bigger orders. I'm going to end up being sort of like Mega Hobby and Cult TV Man who never had a store. And we were on the web forever, forever. <laughs> so anyway, what I'm thinking of doing is I also want to advertise in the car magazines and or not the car magazine, but the model kit magazines and stuff like Mega and those other places do. Because then that hits the actual people like you, the Monster Hobbies mechanics who are out there looking for more kits. Okay, so getting back to this, there are a lot of mold marks on the top of the frame here, and those are going to potentially cause issue with the seating of this floor pan. Doesn't really look like it does. Can you see down there? <laughs> right there. 
but it could. So let's get rid of them. Ah, yeah. Yep, tomorrow's going to be interesting too. All the new kit showcase, kit model cars showcased right here. Lots of dragsters. Drag racing, funny cars, rails. And if I can sell a bunch of those, I can get some more in. Right now, I've got a friend that's helping me with <laughs> OEM model kits. So there's some stuff in that I got from like 1995 that's still sealed and all the rest. So th that's what's going on now. And then I'm going to try to reconnect with Stevens International maybe next week here. Talk to my rep there and see if I can get some brand new stuff, like potentially that uh, 64 Oldsmobile. See if I can get some of those up here. And now that I've got sort of a new plan with being online, I'm also considering maybe instead of just getting one of each model, because in the old days, uh, when I had the hobby shop, of course, if I buy five or 10 57 Chevys, all the money is gone. <laughs> so my shelf only has 10 55 or 57 Chevys on it. Well, that doesn't really work out too well, you know? So instead of going that way, my rep said to go wide, only have one of each model so that it fills up the shelf, you know, so that it's like a nice display, 55, 56, 57 Chevy, Ford, Chrysler, something else, something else, something else, right? Instead of just focusing on one car. But now being online, I can order maybe three or four of something so that uh, three or four of my Monster Hobbies mechanics here can each have one of like the 65 Chevy or the 64 Oldsmobile that's coming out or the uh, Salvinos, is that what they're called? You know, the NASCARs, the nice ones that are coming out. I can get those. I can get a lot of things. Just needs money. <laughs> Insert money here. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But uh, yeah. One thing I wanted to get, but didn't have the money for at the time. Hopefully it'll still be around when I want to order them in. Is the 1923 Ford Model T Depot Hack. Which is a nice kit. It's based off of the, uh, the panel truck and the 26, I think, Ford Coupe. They all have that funny frame with the weird springs you put together. My dad had has the, um, the Miller beer, I think it was. Or not, uh, Budweiser. The Budweiser Model T uh, sedan delivery. So that one was brought out in, what, 77 or something like that? I'm going to inherit that. <laughs> okay, I'm taking off the mold marks off of this cross over here on that side. How's your builds going, everybody? You having fun? Still surviving? I wish I had brought that Coke up. <laughs> I'm getting pretty dry here. Hmm. And we're an hour 36, 38 minutes. You guys have been watching me longer than you've watched Star Wars. No, not quite. Star Wars is like two and a half. Okay, so I think I'm at the length of like the original Dracula movie now. <laughs> Hopefully I was as entertaining. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it's nice to actually be doing this. I belong to uh, the... Ro Rocky Mountain Model Car Club. But I haven't been able to attend a meeting in years. I don't even know if I'm still on the books. They don't really have membership dues, so maybe I am. <laughs> but a big shout out to the Rocky Mountain Model Club. If anybody from there is watching here, thank you for the people that have been sticking on this video for so long. There's still six people in our club right now enjoying the fun. Nice to see everybody that's commenting here. Um, 
yeah, so so this is actually like being at the model car club in a way. Only it's just me. <laughs> Getting hungry myself. It's 147 here in Los Angeles. And it's 247 here. And I started at one. <laughs> and I should have eaten that food. Hey, did any of you see the um the unboxing video of the 77 Ford cruising van that I just released. But did you see it on the Madcap Romanian channel? Now, I know Big Charlie does because Big Charlie, although he's not here. Oh, okay. 1964 BC says, yes, I'm planning on using them on a truck model, maybe the 55 Cameo. That'd be nice. I want to see, uh... oh, Dakota says it's 448, but you're on the other side of Canada. At the center of the universe. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so it would be nice to see the uh, the decal or the sticker, Monster Hobby. If uh, you guys are interested, send it over on my Facebook. I forgot to put that link in there, the description there. But still. I can add that in. <laughs> but yeah, if you add that or you send over the pictures on Facebook, I can figure out how to put them up. And it would be neat to see everybody's Monster Hobbies delivery vehicle. Now, the, that brings me to another thing. This is the logo for the old store and still has its store address, 42B 11th Avenue Southeast phone number and of course the web i'm considering redoing this somehow to make it say monster hobbies online i saw it and yes it will be a stock cruising van alongside the 77 pinto cruising van oh because we're talking about food <laughs> if you notice on the um the madcap romanian version of that video because I've got that video. All my unboxing car videos come out on three channels. One is the Madcap Romanian because it's monetized. So when I put a video there, people watch it and I get paid. So yay money, right? All that money helps to get more stuff. Actually, it really helped. I'll tell you, the monetizing on YouTube, okay, I don't get paid a lot, right? Because my channel is relatively small. It's all based on views. And I figured out how it works. Uh, so briefly, there's a thing called CPM, which is how much money that YouTube and all those guys pay per video, per 1,000 views. And then there's RPM, which is what after YouTube pays whoever and whatever, YouTube takes 45% and gives you 55% of whatever you make. That's for hosting and all that other and dealing with their sponsors and everything else. Because all these videos, when you get monetized, are based off of those little ads you see before the video and, and in the middle of the video and all that. So YouTube goes and match advertisers to your videos, and hopefully <laughs> they're putting good ones in on mine. I don't know from your end. Hopefully there's no manscaping crap. <laughs> but anyway, ah, uh, so that's what they do. So then there's a thing called RPM, which is how much you actually get paid as a YouTube uh, creator, content creator, based on the CPM getting cut down by all those other expenses. So I found out on some of my model car unboxing videos, they are paying me $14 when somebody sees the video, but that's only $14 per 1,000 views. So for all you guys watching my videos, please watch them 1,000 times. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. It cancels out somehow. But uh, tell 1,000 people to watch my videos, each one, and then I'll make $14 or $20. Or I found one video that I make like 10 cents on for 1,000 views. Like, how sucky is that one? But anyway, <laughs> so what I've been doing is I've been taking my YouTube money and you need to make a hundred bucks before you actually get it. So sometimes you wait two or three months before you get a hundred bucks. But I took that money and I put it in a mutual fund. And thank goodness I did. I put it on the S&P 500, which is known as the U.S. 
stock index up here in Canada for you guys watching in the States. And that one is what they call a high risk mutual fund. But the thing is, none of them are high risk because mutual funds have a way of not crashing like a stock on a stock market. So I put that YouTube money in the mutual fund. Now, when I had to close the store, I had to pull the mutual fund. Well, I didn't put a lot of money in the mutual fund, but I did end up making 300 bucks more than what was in there because the mutual fund, what you buy, you buy kind of shares. And I did this through the Scotia Bank. So it's all bank secured. So I got a bunch of shares from that. I put it in this mutual fund in a tax-free savings account. So when you pull it out, it doesn't get taxed by the government unless you go over like $70,000. But I don't have anything like that. But basically, that mutual fund gave me a free month of, uh, it gave me a free month that I needed to cover my expenses from the store. So that was very smart that I put that in and did not spend that money. So if you're wondering, that's how I'm surviving is by having that stored in those kind of things. So in case an emergency happens, I can pull it and use it. And thankfully, enough people saw all these videos and it all added up together with the RPM and all that jazz that it actually saved me for two months <laughs> of expenses for the store. And what else is saving me, of course, is you guys shopping. So Ned White is asking, is there such a model as the Stubnose early 69 through 72-ish Econoline vans? That would be, I think this was uh, the fourth body style. And there is the third, which I think is the 69 through 72. But they are pretty rare right now. They're only producing the 70, 75 style. But they're out there for a price, <laughs> and I don't have any. But anyway, yeah, so all this stuff, lots of fun. Glad everyone can join us. Like I said, uh, tomorrow I will be showing the new model car kits we've got for Monster Hobbies, as well as going over some of the ones we still have in stock. Bare metal foil. Uh, the figures are pretty much gone. Ah, cool. 1964 BC says, I still have the Charlie's Angels van that I built in the late 70s. I also now have the Repop. And I just unboxed one that uh, my friend James loaned me, which is nice. That was the original one. And Rob is saying, the earlier Ford van was only made in, by MPC and only in 120th scale. And it was... There's also a, a version with that police detective guy that's in a wheelchair from that old show. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, <laughs> but that's a model. McCormack or something? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, my dad probably watched that show back in the day. <laughs> Speaking of, of cop TV shows from the 70s, <laughs> my dad used to always watch Barney Miller. And my mom ended up buying him the DVD set. And my dad, oh, Ironsides, that's the one, yep. Yeah. And my dad never bothered watching the DVD. He'd only watch it on regular TV. It's like, Dad, what are you doing, man? <laughs> anyway, so apparently there's a sealed version of the Barney Miller series at my mom's house that maybe I'll inherit or something. I don't know. <laughs> I know my mom was upset because she was like, I bought you that thing and you're still watching it on the TV. What are you doing? <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, no problems, Ned. You've come to the right place. My mechanics are on the case. They know what's going on. So a lot of, a lot of you guys have helped me in the videos. It's hard to do the unboxings because I only have so much time. And then a lot of you guys discover where I messed up or or will add in extra information that I never put in because I didn't find it. But I've been going over to, um, uh, what's the website called? Scalemates. I've been going over to Scalemates and I've been using some of their history there. And then one of my customers phoned me 
And he says, I found your unboxing video on Scalemates. And in fact, in one of the Facebook groups, somebody contacted me and said I was on Facebook or uh, Scalemates as well. So I went and looked, and it, it was on the uh, 1970 Plymouth Super B, the unboxing video I did there, the green car. And sure enough, there I was. <laughs> so I've made history. Model Car Garage is on Scalemates. That's uh, pretty steep. It's awesome. Got to thank everybody for getting me there. So what I'm doing here is, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a, a sunken in line that comes in here just around this cross brace. So I'm taking my knife and I'm scraping away that seam line just to flatten the frame rail out a little bit. In fact, I should use my file. Oh, yes. <laughs> just remembered. I, I got sidetracked because I'm reading your uh, everybody's posts here. But I was going to say, on the Madcap Romanian channel, getting all the way back to this, on that super van unboxing video, I made a little teeny commercial inside of that for a channel called Chop Chop Recipe. And they are down in the South Seas somewhere. I forget which country they're at, but it's one of those uh, islands, right? And they have a channel. It's a cooking channel, and they do a whole bunch of... Asian noodle dishes. And I make reference to bagogi chicken, which is from Korea. And it is really good. So because we were talking about that it's one, it was 147 at the time. It's now three o'clock my time. And we're all hungry. <laughs> and that bagogi chicken, if you check out Chop Chop recipe, it's really good. And it's easy to make. You just need soya sauce, some sesame oil, uh, sesame seeds. You could put in, you're making a marinade, marinade. So you can put in pork, chicken, beef. I don't think I do fish though, <laughs> but you can do that. And uh, you put it on a bed of rice and it is very nice. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> To be honest, when I was cooking up the first batch, of course, you know, when you're you're cooking for yourself and you're being a chef sort of thing, right? You do a taste test. I ended up eating half of it in my taste test because <laughs> it was that good. <laughs> uh, my poor family didn't get as much as I got that day, but uh, I'm, I won't tell if you won't. <laughs> oh, boy. I guess if they're watching this live stream, they'll, they'll be pretty upset. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, so the frame is starting to feel a lot smoother. Hey, I, I don't know. Do you want me to live stream build the whole model today? I, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Although I'd get that watch time I need to monetize this channel. Yep. You guys are so lucky. You can play some music in the background at your house and watch this thing, and I can't because I would get a copyright strike notification if I played uh, Duran Duran or something. Okay, Dakota, we will see you soon. Hopefully you can uh, check out tomorrow when I show all those new model cars that I got on the channel. Looking at 153 for time. I think maybe let's just do this for another seven minutes and then we'll cut her off for the day. Come back next week to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Gar Garage Build Party for all my Monster Hobbies mechanics out there. That'll be good. Maybe, uh, maybe 1964 BC's models will come in and then he can take one out of there and build it with us. And I think maybe what I'll do is I'll continue doing this frame when this is over, <laughs> just so that I've got it done. Oh, so we're coming up close. We've got a few minutes. I will show you this whole enlarger tool. This is one my dad made. 
I showed all my tools at the beginning of the video in case you want to know. Now, what I noticed here is that our frame is tight to the pin in this one little hole. So here's how the hole enlarger works. Because it's got a taper, it's going to take and kind of taper the hole a little. But you just put it in there and you just give it a little twist here and there. Okay. And you test it. Get in there. Now you can see it fits down. So my dad made this and he's actually got another one that's thinner. And it's come in handy for 30, 40 years now. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. So now we got that nice frame sitting pretty nicely up underneath there. Find that hobby blade again. Getting through all this stuff. Okay, so we got five minutes left. So let's just wrap this up by going over what I've been going over all the way through this video. <laughs> then I got a vacuum in here. Whoop, knock the mic back. Okay, so tomorrow, Sunday, one o'clock, same time as we started this video, whatever time that is in your your place. <laughs> We will be looking at brand new model car kits that I just brought in for Monster Hobbies. We've got dragsters, we've got hot rods, uh, original factory stock, and a bunch of other cool things. I'll show everything that we've got now. But if you, you can't wait, you're all itchy, check it out, www.monster-hobbies.ca. You're our one and only online hobby shop. Well, maybe not. <laughs> anyway, so there's that. That's tomorrow at 1. Then if we've uploaded all our replacement tools, well, not that, but like our blades and whatnot. So if you guys need that, everything is linked in the description down below. But those are online now. So just check around the hobby shop or the Monster Hobbies web page. I've also got Plastruct and Evergreen Styrene sheets and things like that if you're into kit bashing. So I've got that. There's a Monster Hobbies newsletter, which is up along... You can subscribe to it. I think it's an image up along the side somewhere on the www.monster-hobbies homepage. So there's that. If you want to deal with us on the homepage or buy stuff from us, we accept PayPal and credit cards. We have that secure system where none of your information is shared with anybody. Our site is priced in Canadian dollars. <laughs> this is what you don't see behind the scenes. We have a sale going on that that is the Black Friday savings. So when you go to the shopping cart and you buy something, type in Black Friday savings and you will save 15. That's one five percent off all your sales. Free shipping on orders over seventy five dollars within Canada. And I know a lot of you guys take advantage of that one because it's a good one. Not for me or, or my accountant, <laughs> but that's at tax time. And then, oh, sign up for our newsletter. So that's all the points. It is now an hour and 58 minutes into here. So I hope you guys all enjoyed that. Oh, and the other part is I got my business license from the town of High River. So it's all official now until December 31st <laughs> that I can sell as an online retailer without anybody coming to the house or anything like that. So that's good. And we've got a minute and 30 seconds. So so next week, I will continue working on this nice van with everybody. I enjoyed our time. I enjoyed uh, talking with all of my Monster Hobbies model car garage mechanics, which, of course, are all of you special guys out there and girls and everybody. <laughs> I guess, yeah, everybody, everybody, all my model mechanics. Now I got to go down and I got to get me some of that bagogi beef that I made up and I've got to open up that nice two liter of Coca-Cola that I got that I was going to have up here for fun and totally forgot about it. <laughs> so yeah, we will see you tomorrow, 1964 BC and everybody else. I, uh, yeah, with that newsletter, I don't, I, I don't know if uh, 1964 BC is hooked up to that newsletter or not, but if you are, 
you know that it comes out and it's a nice, cool thing. All those pictures on that newsletter, you can click on them and it'll take you right to whatever it is. So like, for example, if I had this in stock and you saw a picture for it and you clicked on it on that um, newsletter, you could go right there and you could purchase that thing. And of course, don't forget to check out our stickers. We've got that group build going on over on our Facebook page where you could get one of these. It's for Make Your Own Monster Hobbies van. And I sent, um, you know, you buy the stickers for like next to nothing and I mail them out to you and then you can put them on whatever. So, oh, 1964 BC is in the newsletter. So I hope you like them. I, I, I try not to kill everybody's email boxes with them, but maybe I should not do that. <laughs> anyway. Okay, Rob, we will see you soon. Hopefully tomorrow you can check these things out. And uh, yeah, nice to keep company with everybody. Oh, there we are, the two minute and 30 second mark. So until next time, everybody, we'll see you next week. Keep checking the channel because, well, tomorrow's new models. Uh, Friday is going to be unboxing. Maybe I'll throw something in the week. And then we'll do this again next Saturday. And then keep going. I'm getting quite a channel here. I should do like 24-hour programming every day and burn out and no anyway. <laughs> okay, so we'll see you all next time and I will end this live stream. So have a good one.